Hi everyone! We are ready to dive in every single book I read this year. I can't wait for this. So without any further ado, let's dive into this video. Sorry that I'm looking down, but I've not looked through this list, and these are all the books I've read, and I'm not familiar with most of them, which is <laughs> weird, probably, but yeah, I'm not. So, for those of you who don't know me, well, pity on you because I am very loving and fun, and I love reading. In case you couldn't get it from the title of the video, the number of books that I've read, and everything else on my channel. But jokes apart, I just want to share with you every single book I read this year. I don't follow trends as much, so you won't see in my list as many books that are considered trendy because I have a lot of readings to do for my school and I tend to prefer my school readings over my personal readings, but this year I tried to fit in as many personal reads I possibly could so you will find some of that and I also decided to put aside from the physical book some star ratings of the ones that I remember most vividly because some of them very honestly I don't remember by Indra Sinha Animal People is a book about people that have been changed by the radiation in the floor and this causes them to be different. I didn't like it as much. Three stars. Then I read Middle Passages which was interesting but more of an academic book so if you're not into academia I wouldn't suggest it for you. Then Gardening in the Tropics is as well an academic book. We have Othello and Othello, I might say I'm not in tune with Shakespeare as much. It was okay, but not really my cup of tea. Slow Violence and the Environmentalism of the Poor by Rob Nixon. And that one I liked a lot, even though still it's all academia, academic books that I used for my essays. I read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, and that one was one of my very favorite books of the year as an overall. I really, really loved it. To that one, I gave five stars. I read A Month and a Day and Letters by Ken Sarawiwa, and that one I gave three stars just because the way it's written is not the best in my personal opinion, but obviously it touches very important topics, including activism and the defense of his native people, so it was really, really good. Then I read The Broken Heart by John Ford. I just don't remember what this is about. I just don't. So I probably read it in a single sitting and just forgot all about it. The Algebra of Infinite Justice is another academic book that I've read. Mario Pagetica by John Milton as well. He wrote such weird stuff and that one, one star as well. Just don't like it. I don't like his style. I don't like how all good and beautiful he wants to make everything look. I don't like how he writes. I don't like anything about him. So no, it's a no for me. Nurdin Farah Gifts. This was another book for my modules, but it was really, really good. And it talks about a woman that wants to gain independence, but at the same time, she wants to keep benefiting from gifts that people give her. So I think it was really interesting. Then Tide Running from Kunia Kimpadu is based on the relationship between Western people and the people that are inside countries like Africa that get used for sexual pleasure and the Western people believe that the people living in Africa are the exact same as they are and kind of get misguided by this and this is kind of a big deal because this makes the uh, Western people benefit too much of African people that have lived through a different story, are used to different things and get just exploited and abused for their sexual usage, so not the best. And Tide Running, I think I would give three. Then I read The Hungry Tide by Amitav Ghosh and that one was really really good, that one I would give 
four stars. The dubbings were great, just the style was not my cup of tea, but they were really good. And the Hungry Tide I would give four because that one was really good. It talked about the notions of memory and remembering people that are dead, remembering the past. I, I really liked it very, very much. That was one of my favorites. We have The Word is Moving Around Me, a memoir of the Haiti earthquake, and that one as well. I remember good things about it, but I'm not super sure if it was a poetry collection or an actual book, but still, I remember that it was very, very good. Then I have Frappuccini's Daughter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. This one is a great classic and oh my god, I love Nathaniel Hawthorne for what he writes in a kind of general sense. Rappuccini's daughter was kind of a fun story because it talked about this daughter that grows up in this poisonous garden and she gets brought up in this poisonous garden for a whole her life and it, it was pretty interesting in my opinion and the story was really fun so I really liked it. Young Good Man Brown by Nathaniel Daniel Orhan as well and that one as well I think I remember it was interesting I even made an essay on it. it it was really good and I got a really good mark for it so it was good but at the same time that one was not as fun as Rappuccini's daughter but still for me it was really good then from Nathaniel Orhan we have another version of Young Goodman Brown I've read it so many times so I put it through twice then we have Noontide Tall from Ru Rumesh Guneskira and this one was another one that I read but don't really remember much about because probably I didn't get it as thoroughly as I should have and still it was a good book I remember but I don't really remember what it was about. Then I have from Herman Melville, The Bell Tower, and that was a cool story. It was a really nice read, I love short stories so it was really good. Then, from the famous Herman Melville, I also read Moby Dick, and oh boy, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. At all. No, it was just a no for me. Just going on for pages and pages and pages about the freaking whale, and the types of whales, and the chasing of the whale. Who that like I get like um, general stories should be chasing some of the thing, but that one was just too much. So no, one star. Bye. Crap. Then I read the Cambridge Companion to Nathaniel Author because I did an essay on it by Richard A. Millington, uh, that was the editor, and that one was interesting. It made Nathaniel Author even more interesting. And doing some research on the authors for me really helps them to get their three potential through. So I was really interested in by it. Then I read from Herman Melville, Bartleby the Scrivener and Benito Serino and Bartleby especially is such a good story, I really liked it, it's a kind of parody and critique of capitalism and I really really loved it because it critiques the fact that people have to be machines or machine-like to perform at their best. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving that one was okay-ish. It was kind of a similar vibe to the one of Nathaniel Author. I didn't dislike it, let's say. And Rip Van Winkle by Washington Irving. And that one was uh, fun-ish, let's say, because it was this man who was super religious, super good, and then he believes to be going inside the forest. And that one as well is playing on those ideas of what you think and what actually happened because while he goes in the st story he sees his beautiful wife that goes through things of witchcraft and he basically believes throughout all his life that she has done that and so he tortures himself basically on this information which is kind of pointless let me say it. Then one of my overall best reads of the year, Crick Crack by Ed Veg Denticott. The best story that I read from the book was the first short story. It's basically a collection of short stories and it was so well written, so emotional. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So that one is an overall huge recommendation if you want to pick something up for next year. It's not a new read but it's a great read so 
absolutely yes for me. Then we have another thing that is academia again. Disaster Writing the Cultural Politics of Catastrophe in Latin America by Mark D. Anderson. That one was interesting as always for these kind of books. Then we have The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. It was good. It was very very good as an academic read. I cannot say that I disliked it. Then I read The 999 Women of Auschwitz in Italian and that one I liked very much. It's kind of a historical book and it's written by Heather and Dune McAdam and this was yeah a good book. The information it conveys is really really good because it talks about how those women survived and why they were the ones that no one talked about but that had the highest rate of success of coming out alive of the place because they were a lot more used to everything that was happening in there compared to the people that came later that couldn't believe what they were seeing, witnessing or doing. So it was different and interesting. Then I also read a book that shaped kind of my idea about my future, which is The Organized Writer, How to Stay on Top of All Your Projects and Never Miss a Deadline by Anthony Johnston. That book, if you want to become a writer, is really interesting and it talks about how to deal with projects, how to do everything as a freelancer, it has organization techniques. It was really good, it just taught me that I don't want to become a freelancer ever. It was a good one, but it taught me a lot about what I don't want to become. Then we are going into more personal reads, not academic reads, because we are heading towards summer in my reading list. I read Heroes by Stephen Fry and I liked it a lot. I also read Mythos and I liked that more, but still, it was really, really good. He writes really nicely. He makes everything clear and good, even though it's material that is pretty hard if you've never studied the Greek word but are interested in it like myself so it was really good. Then I read The Bad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Oh my freaking god she writes amazingly. I loved 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 that book. Five stars for me. Super great. I loved it. Then I read The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton and that one as well was good but I would give it three stars so mm -hmm. good but not the best. Then I read Kolimsky Hives by Lionel Davidson and I still have a review coming up for this one because it was such a bad book in my opinion. I don't know if the fact that I listened to it on audiobook was making any difference in the way I was perceiving it but just crap. The story, everything. Bad, bad, bad. Stay Tuned by Jeffy Deaver and I liked it quite a lot. So it's a short story that I listened to on Audible and it was really interesting. So good for me. Then The Only Study Guide You'll Ever Need by Jade Bowler. Another highly, 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 highly recommended book for this year. Five stars always five stars so good so good so good jade wrote an incredible guide then i read the compound effect by darren hardy this one was another audible one that i listened to the book had one interesting information what the compound effect is which is very very shortly that what you do today will shape what you will do tomorrow so if you do something good for yourself today tomorrow you will be in a good position so that's good. The majority of it was just going over and over examples of the same exact thing, so not for me. Then I read The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I made the review on this channel about it and I made that as well about the only study guide you'll ever need and the miniatures and the ballad of songbirds and snakes. So you have a lot of reviews on the channel if you want to check them out. And The Appeal, 4 out of 5, really really good. Then I read uh, Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Sunder and that one as well. I made a book review on the channel so go check it out if you are interested about this title. Then I have Hop THAA by James Anthony Tyler. Another one that I listened to on audiobook and 
really what the fuck was that it was really confusing me and my boyfriend didn't like it we listened to it together it wasn't that great in my opinion didn't like it as much then I read by Dr. Steve Peters, The Chimp Paradox, the acclaimed mind management program to help you achieve success, confidence and happiness. A review about this is coming as well on the channel. I have a lot to say about it, a lot of things it taught me and it really helped me to become calmer, to give myself the benefit of the doubt, to be better with myself. So it was a really good read in my opinion. Then I read Goldsmith, The Traveller and The Deserted Village and Longfellow Tales of Wayside Inn and other poems by Oliver Goldsmith. Goldsmith is for me goodish, not the best, but goodish. And that read, I don't remember at all. So I don't really remember what that was about. Very sorry, not my cup of tea probably. Then by Gillian Flynn, I read Gone Girl. And I liked Gone Girl a lot. We have a review about this on the channel as well, if you want to check it out. Then by Yuval No Harari, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. It was really interesting, but not as good as Sapiens, so a 4 out of 5. Then I have Fabulous or Young, Frost Ballister. I think it was an academic book. I have zero memory of it at all. Then I read Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and that one it's good. I must say I'm doing an essay on it and it's good. Just one of Jane Austen's books, you know? Very long. Very, very long. Then A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. That was so good. Every book of hers I love. Then Roots and Roots. That is another academic book that I've read. Then I read Candide and Other Stories and this one surprisingly is a 5 out of 5. It's so good. It's fun and engaging and I don't know I really really liked the stories. Then I read Benito Serino. I finished it. I didn't remember much of it. But I just finished it. It didn't say much to me at all. This is by Herman Melville and it was no. Nah. Then A Sentimental Journey by Louise Stern and oh my god. No. No. Trouble stories are not it for me. Then I read Unfuck Your Brain on Audible as well and it's by Faith G. Harper and I don't know I think it was kind of using bad words for the sake of using them and I don't know it's just saying do whatever you want without listening to others so not the best for me. Then we have A Hundred Days of Sunlight from Abby Emmons. She's another fellow YouTuber. She is pretty famous by now, so she is really good. And she does videos about writing and everything. And this is her debut novel. I also have that on Audible and I really like it. Really, really like it. Then we have Story Genius by Lee Cron. And that one as well is pretty good. It's really interesting as a book about writing, how to write, how to craft a story. So if you are into writing, Story Genius is a must. It's so great. Then we have uh, You Truly Shine by Deborah Friederman. She is Pamela Rafe's cousin and talks about skin, how to get a glowy skin, skin issues, what you have to deal with. I think it was a really good and informative book. Then we have Dostoevsky Notes from the Underground. The overall book was okay-ish, would say 3 out of 5, but not my cup of tea. Then Nightwood by Juna Barnes and that one as well was a surprisingly good book but I think I was a bit stressed while reading it so I don't remember much of it. Then The Journal of a Tour to the Hebrides by Samuel Johnson another book that I wouldn't suggest for my life. Another wonderful tour in Scotland and voyage to the Hebrides in 1772. All of these tours, like why do you waste your time doing that? And from Francine Prose we have a reading like writer and that one as well was a book about writing but it was dealing with extracts and what to gain from the extracts and how to learn from them. Not really my cup of tea. Molloy by Samuel Beckett. I even made an essay of that. I tend to make essays on the stuff that I hate 
and that one was one of those books. The Art of the Novel by Molan Kundera. I don't remember much of that, but I think okay-ish, not the best. Hail Fire. Another book that I was like, at the very end, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> not for me. Puzzling at best. No. It's all poetry, which okay, but it was just confusing. Hobby and Dingen is a book by Ben Rice and it talks about not eating but in a very weird way and it was written from the point of view of the brother of the girl that actually gets into this whole mess of not eating because she has imaginary friends that get lost and she decides to stop eating until they find them. I wouldn't spoil it for you but I don't know it was a bit weird for me it was as impactful it was a good story it's a short story so if you want to pick it up I don't think it's a bad idea just it was a bit mm, I think it could have been more impactful climate and literature which is another let's say it academic book by Edlene Jones Putra and it was interesting but as every academic book it didn't leave me with as much as I maybe would have liked to. From Catherine Ryan, The Audacity and this review is on the channel if you want to check it out. Voice and Context in the 18th Century Verse by Joanna Fowler read by me to write an essay and it was interesting literature and the environment which is something that i'm always interested about by timothy clark and it was really interesting it really helped me from an essay that i then misled in the wrong direction but i still got a good mark i don't know how so it was still a good experience born of no woman by frank boyce and that one was one that i listened to on audible that we have the review on the channel we have the best christmas ever still by abby emmons as she published the sequel to her previous book and i really liked it and i don't know why i didn't like it as much as the first but still for me, it was a really good book. She writes really nicely. It's just young adult books that you can pick up. They are light reads, they are good. And I listened to The Queen's Gambit by Walter Lewis. And that one, in my opinion, was a bit boring. So I promised to myself that I will watch the series at some point to kind of have a comparison. But the book was a bit boring, yeah. By J.M. Coetzee, The Master of Petersburg. And if you want another depressing book like Dostoevsky, you can read this one. This is great for it. And it's also weird and goes beyond what you can consider disgusting. Housekeeping by Marin Robinson. That one was okay-ish in my opinion. Where They Wait by Scott Carson. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It was really good in my opinion. It talks about mental powers and being mentally influenced to do things. I think it's really good. It plays with memory, it plays with the dead. It's really cool. By Vic Tivu, Empowered. Live your life with passion and purpose. And that one I gave five stars. It's really motivational, as explained in my review. Then we have Blonde Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. And I gave it three stars just because of the theoretical background. Because the rest is straight up crude, disgusting violence. No, I'm not even gonna say it. I want to keep this a friendly channel, so no, this is not gonna be said, but this book is horrid. As penultimate book, we have My Body by Emily Ratajkowski, and I have a review for that on the channel, so you can check this out. And I gave it a modest 3 out of 5. It could have been better. And last but not least, Taipei by Tao Lin, which is another 3 out of 5 because it's all, all, all about drugs and it will get a review because it deserves one but for real it was extreme oh this was a long video guys a long long video but i hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you enjoyed my recommendations and if you have any recommendation for me that i didn't list in this whole list Tell me, I really want to know what you want me to read next year, what I missed out on, what I could do better. So yeah, please tell me if there's anything else that I could read, add to my reading list. I will make a video about my TBR very soon. But yeah, tell me what you think, tell me what I should read and I hope to see you all in the next video. So subscribe!
Bye, guys.